This is Dead Serious, a show about short horror stories worthy of discussion. I'm Dead Palette, and it's Halloween month, bitches. Today we're taking a look at another Saya and Underworld story. The Manhole, published Sunday, 21st, September, 2008. Let's get right into it. There was a girl called Mayumi. I'm presuming that that's probably true. Uh, somewhere in the world, there is someone named Mayumi. One day, when she was walking towards the school, she caught sight of another girl ahead on the street wearing the same school uniform as her. The girl was her classmate and was often the target of bullying in her class. Bullying could often get extreme in an all-girls school like Mayumi's. Sometimes her classmates just ignored the girl, and at other times they would do things like put used sanitary items on the girl's desk. The teachers knew about the bullying but pretended they didn't see it. So far, we're dearing, we're, we're dearing, we're dearing. I, I swear to God, I wasn't trying to do a racist accent. We're dealing with a very real life whore. This is a very practical thing that people deal with uh, when you go to an all girl school. And bullying, of course, is everywhere, and it's damn near impossible to get rid of it. But this is the kind of like weird ass gay shit people do in in all uh, in in single sex schools in single sex institutions it's just like oh, isn't it funny if we put this you know tampon on a girl's desk oh okay mayumi had no particular feelings towards this uh towards the girl but she didn't dare be the odd one out and so bullied the girl along with the rest of her class she remembered saying something some cool things to the girl i hope this goes in a, a carry direction where we get uh a lot of blood and guts and and everything along those lines. So again, we're dealing with uh, peer pressure. Again, very real life horror. I think that um, it's kind of frustrating how often people will write about being young and not deal with these kinds of issues. These are the kinds of things that people really got to deal with when they're young. It's less about um, very idealized Jeff the Killer kind of bullying. Usually it's something weird and gross, like what is happening here. And there's that kind of psychological torture of being someone who's indifferent to someone, but you kind of have to bully along with other people to not get bullied yourself, you know? We see shades of that in uh, Unseen Wombat's hands. You, you can kind of see bits and pieces of that there in small ways. Mayumi got closer and noticed the girl was looking very happy and somehow she kept jumping at the same spot. Mayumi was puzzled. The spot where she was jumping was uh, jumping on was a manhole. Why was she just jumping like that, smiling like mad? Nine, 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 nine. The girl kept muttering while jump uh, while she jumped. What are you doing? Mayumi asked. But the girl didn't answer and just went on muttering. Nine, 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 nine. Hey, don't ignore me, Mayumi said, with m more heat in her voice. Heat, that's a weird way to describe that. But still, the girl said nothing. Besides 999, I'm assuming, right? Until that moment, Mayumi never despised the girl like the others did. But what with, but what with the girl enjoying all by herself and ignoring her completely, a sudden feeling of anger welled up inside her. So we're having some grammar problems there, but it, again, these are translated from Japanese, so we're, we're forgiving of that. Why the hell are you doing that? She asked once again, but the girl went on jumping happily as before, as if she hadn't heard Mayumi's outburst. Then a strange idea cure, a, a cured, occurred to Mayumi that made this jumping on the manhole, as you say numbers, a very wonderful and interesting thing to do. It was a stupid idea, Mayumi knew. She felt confused about her feelings, and at the same time found herself wanting to make the girl stop what she was doing. Mayumi somehow couldn't accept that someone like her was enjoying herself in that way. So I very roughly understand what they're trying to say here, but it's still kind of bizarre. I, uh, it's kind of written in a clunky way, but I think what they're trying to say is the the idea has, like, infected this girl's mind, I guess, is what they're trying to get at. Move, I'll try that myself, Mayumi said, 
and pushing the girl away, stood on the manhole herself. Mayumi bent her knees well before making a big jump. At that exact moment, the girl who had been pushed away quickly and using all of her strength, removed the, ma the lid of the manhole. Mayumi fell right in. The girl put the lid back on, smiling with satisfaction. She started jumping again, this time muttering, 10, 10, 10, 10. So that's sort of funny. I like that. So the very premise of this is interesting to me. It's a very classical, old school, copy pasta kind of thing from America. And it's always interesting to see that that is not a phenomenon unique to the English speaking parts of the internet. But I see how, how many people could take a story of this nature and rework it in various different ways. It's such a, a kind of unique idea that I can't think, uh, there's gotta be some other story like this. There's the photographs, the girl in the photograph where she's like making a peace sign and then the person gets killed and someone else picks up the photographs and instead she's holding up uh, three with her fingers. Um, it's, it's kind of that story, but this one is more visceral and also more believable. It's less weird fiction and much more, th there's a better suspension of disbelief. You can ground the story in a much more um, believable way. Scrolling down, there is a comment made by Jimmy um, that says, this version is a bit too complicated. I doubt many girls would think of jumping on manholes to get revenge. I'm not sure what he means by that. The one I heard was, a man, while wandering by an insane asylum, hears the inmates inside the yard on the other side of a large, obscuring stone wall chanting, 13, 13, 13. Curious, he pauses and tries to strain to make out, to make sure he's hearing it right. And as he's listening, he notices a chink in the stone that makes of the wall and decides to see what could have made them so excited. He looks into the hole, which just so happens to be at eye level, and suddenly receives a poke to the eye from a dirty finger. As he's reeling back in shock and mild pain, blinking it away, he hears the crazies take up a new chant, 14, 14, 14. That's pretty funny. I like this concept. Another thing that's interesting about this story and, and this one that Jimmy put forward is that it, pre it preys on human curiosity, which I think is interesting. Um, anytime you see something that's weird or that you don't understand and you get curious about it and then you get invested and then something horrific happens, that I think is the heart of horror, at least to me. And uh, these stories are very prototypical in that way. Now, if you enjoyed that, please consider helping out the community and supporting my channel. You can support the community by conversing in the comments below, going to TooSpooky.com for original horror stories, and trying your hand at short horror yourself. You can support me by liking this video, following me on Twitter and Tumblr, links in the description, and checking out my art page, which is also down below. Thank you so much for your time, and now on to our sponsor at this non-moment in time, which is... Yabba Zabba. Yabba Zabba. It's the taxi cab of candy bars? I don't know.